Hi, I'm going to go through the answers to 27.4, but I'm not going to write them out because they're just written, um, they're written answers rather than mathematical. So um, question one says, what is meant by induced fission? So induced fission would be fission which is started by a slow-moving neutron. Um, B part one says, what is the function of the control rods in the nuclear reactor? The function of the control rods is to absorb neutrons. Name a suitable material from which control rods are made. That would be boron. And then describe how the control rods are used to maintain a nuclear reactor. So its power is, output is constant. The control rods absorb fission neutrons so that there is only one fissionable fission neutron available from each fission event. Question two. State the function of the following parts of the thermal nuclear reactor and give an example material for each. So moderator. Um, they are there to slow down the thermal neutrons, so they are more likely to cause a fission event. They do this by absorbing the kinetic energy of the neutrons. And an example material would be carbon or graphite. And then the coolant. The coolant is there, again, to reduce thermal energy, which will reduce the kinetic energy of the fission neutrons. And, um, and they, they just use water for that. Part three. Explain why the mass and mass of fissionable fuel in a nuclear reactor must exceed a critical value in order for fission to be sustained. That's because if there's too little of the um, fuel, then there isn't enough to cause a chain reaction. So you need a critical mass that's enough to cause a chain reaction. Um, so that there's enough fission events um, to enable that chain reaction to occur and doesn't just die away. Question four, explain why the fuel rods from a nuclear reactor are more reactive after the removal from the reactor than they were before they were used. So uranium has a, a half-life of 703.8 million years. This means it is not very active. It's very rare that a, um, a radioactive particle will be given out from it. However, once it's undergone fission, its daughter nuclei, they are radioactive. And in fact, the daughters undergo several stages of um, nuclear decay very quickly. So the daughters, the daughters and then the daughters of the daughters, they have short half-lives, which means they're very active. Some of them are less than a second. So they're incredibly active. And then it says, explain why, um, so that, no, sorry, that'll mean that they're very, very hot. Then it says, explain why radioactive waste must be stored in secure and safe. Sorry, must be stored in safe conditions. That's because radioactive materials damage the environment. Um, they are ionising, which means if they get into um, the, a system where they can be ingested or breathed in by living material, they can cause cancer. They cause mutation of the DNA. Um, also in safe conditions because they they can be used as weapons um, so you can enrich uranium and it can be used as a weapon and of course we wouldn't want that to happen because that would be um, devastating for the people that the weapons were used on. So yeah, um, mostly because they damage the environment but also because they pose a security risk. Okay, hope that helps.